back with predictions for LXL GCSE Chemistry Paper 1 for 2025. Our brand new predictive papers are out now and they've been carefully designed to help you feel confident heading into the exam. So essentially, whether you're aiming for a grade four or pushing for a grade nine, this is the perfect way to practice the kinds of questions examiners love to ask. And new for 2025, we've created a full video walkthrough for every single question, which means we can show you exactly what the examiner wants to see. So whether you're finding electrolysis tricky, struggling with mole calculations, or just want to speed up on those six mark questions, we're really here to help. So the questions are realistic and based on the specification and past exam trends, you'll get a full mark scheme so you can see how each mark is earned. The video explanations are clear and calm with guidance from a friendly teacher. And of course, if you're wondering how successful we've been previously, we're proud to have over 1,000 five-star reviews from students, parents, and teachers. Okay, so in this video, we have separate hire, combined hire, separate foundation, and combined foundation. So do use the timestamps to access the bit that is relevant to you. Now let's start with Edexcel GCSE Separate Science Chemistry, higher tier for 2025. So first of all, we suggest brushing up on separating mixtures. You need to be able to describe and explain simple physical separation techniques. Filtration is used to separate an insoluble solid from a liquid, while simple distillation is used to separate a liquid from a solution. So for example, separating water from salt water. Next, we have dot and cross diagrams. Be prepared to draw and interpret dot and cross diagrams for ionic covalent and metallic bonding. For ionic bonding, like sodium chloride, electrons are transferred make sure to show full outer shells and charges. For covalent bonding like water, oxygen or methane, electrons are shared and you should show outer shells clearly. Next, we have electrolysis and half equations. You'll need to understand how electrolysis works and be able to write half equations for reactions at the electrodes. Electrolysis is the splitting of substances using electricity. The positive electrode attracts anions, non-metals, and the negative attracts cations, metals. Learn the reactivity series. Less reactive metals are deposited first. Practice writing half equations too, such as sodium ions plus one electron gives sodium. Chloride ions form chlorine gas and release electrons. Then brush upon the effect of bonding on structure. Know how different types of bonding affect physical properties like melting point, conductivity and hardness. Ionic compounds have high melting points and conduct electricity when molten or dissolved. Simple covalent molecules have low melting points and don't conduct electricity. Giant covalent structures have very high melting points and mostly don't conduct except graphite. Metals have high melting points and conduct well because of their delocalised electrons. We then have diamond and graphite. You must be able to compare and explain the structures and properties of diamond and graphite. Diamond has four bonds per carbon atom. No free electrons is very hard and does not conduct electricity. Graphite, on the other hand, has three bonds per carbon atom, forms layers that slide easily and has free electrons, so it does conduct. Make sure you can explain how their structure links to their properties. We also recommend brushing up on atom economy. Be confident calculating atom economy and explaining why it matters. The formula is atom economy equals the relative formula mass of the desired product divided by the total mass of all products multiplied by 100. High atom economy means less waste, which is better for both the environment and profit. Remember to only use a balance equations when doing the calculation. Next, we have weak and strong acids. You need to know the difference between strong and weak acids in terms of ionisation. Strong acids like hydrochloric acid ionise completely in water. Weak acids like ethanoic acid only partially ionise. This affects the pH of the solution, not the concentration. Strong acids have a lower pH than weak acids at the same concentration. Okay then, we suggest revising titrations. You should be able to describe how to carry out a titration and calculate concentrations. You'll use equipment like a burette, pipette and conical flask with an indicator, usually phenolphthalein and methyl orange. Be sure to repeat the experiment until you get concordant results within 0.10 centimetres cubed. You'll often then be asked to calculate concentration using the formula N equals C times V and you'll need balanced equations to find reacting ratios. Okay, nearly there, we suggest you also revise dynamic equilibria. Understand how to predict the effects of changes on a system at equilibrium. 
If you increase the temperature, equilibrium shifts in the endothermic direction. If you increase pressure, it shifts to the side with fewer gas molecules. If you increase the concentration of a substance, the system shifts to use it up. Use arrows in your explanations to show the direction of the shift. Now, our final prediction for higher separate science is life cycle assessments or LCAs. You must be able to describe the stages of a product's life and compare their environmental impacts. The four stages are raw material extraction, manufacturing use and disposal. Don't forget to consider energy use, water consumption, pollution and waste in your answers. And here, just be prepared to compare different products like plastic versus paper bags and explain the trade-offs involved. OK, those are our higher separate predictions. Let's now move on to higher combined two. We've put together a clear breakdown of the key topics that are most likely to come up, along with tips to help you tackle them with confidence. Whether you're aiming to secure a pass or push toward the top grades, this guide is here to support your revision. Now, first up, we suggest revising separating mixtures. You should be confident describing and explaining the main physical separation techniques. These include filtration, crystallization, simple distillation and paper chromatography. Filtration is used to remove insoluble solids from liquids. Simple distillation allows you to separate a solvent from a solution. For example, collecting pure water from salty water. These are basic but essential techniques, so make sure you know when and why each one is used. Next, we have dot and cross diagrams. You'll need to draw and interpret dot and cross diagrams for both ionic and covalent bonding. For ionic bonding, which happens between a metal and a non-metal, electrons are transferred from one atom to another. Make sure you can draw full outer shells and show the charges of the resulting ions. Covalent bonding, on the other hand, involves two non-metals sharing electrons. Focus on molecules like water, oxygen, carbon dioxide and methane. Only draw the outer shells and clearly show the shared pairs of electrons. Next, for higher combined, we suggest revising electrolysis and half equations. Electrolysis is the process of using electricity to split ionic compounds. It only works when the substance is molten or in solution, as this allows the ions to move freely. The negative electrode attracts positive ions where reduction occurs. The positive electrode attracts negative ions where oxidation occurs. You should be able to write simple half equations such as sodium ions gaining electrons to become sodium atoms and chloride ions forming chlorine gas and releasing electrons. Now next we suggest revising carbon allotropes. Make sure you can compare the structures and properties of diamond and graphite. In diamond, each carbon atom forms four strong covalent bonds, making it very hard with a high melting point. It also doesn't conduct electricity. In graphite, each carbon forms three bonds, creating layers that can slide over each other, making it soft. It also has delocalized electrons, which means it can conduct electricity. It's important to link structure, bonding and properties clearly in your exam to get full marks. OK, our next topic is dynamic equilibria. You need to understand how changes in conditions affect reversible reactions at equilibrium. If the temperature increases, the equilibrium shifts to the endothermic direction to absorb the extra heat. If the pressure increases, it shifts to the side with fewer gas molecules. If you increase the concentration of a reactant, the equilibrium shifts to use up the added substance. You don't need to memorise specific examples, but you should be able to apply the principle to any scenario you're given. Now, finally, we have potable water. Be prepared to explain how potable or safe to drink water is produced both in the UK and from seawater. Potable water isn't chemically pure. It still contains some dissolved substances, but it's safe for consumption. In the UK, groundwater is made potable through sedimentation, filtration and chlorination. From seawater, it can be obtained by distillation, which is energy intensive, or through reverse osmosis. OK, then, those are our higher combined predicted topics. We're now moving on to our foundation predictions, and we're going to start with separate foundation. If you're sitting the 2025 LXL GCSE separate science chemistry paper one at foundation level, this guide is here to help you revise the key topics clearly and confidently. We've broken down what you need to know, explained how it links to exam questions and included some helpful tips too.
So first up, we suggest brushing up on acids and alkalis. You need to understand the pH scale and the difference between acids, alkalis and neutral substances. Acids have a pH less than 7, alkalis have a pH more than 7 and a neutral solution is exactly pH 7. It's important to know how neutralisation works. When an acid reacts with an alkali, it forms a salt and water. The word equation you should remember is acid plus alkali equals salt and water. Now next, revising separating mixtures. Make sure you can describe methods such as filtration, crystallisation, simple distillation and paper chromatography. Filtration is used to separate solids from liquids. Simple distillation separates a liquid from a solution, like getting pure water from salty water. Chromatography separates colours in inks or dyes, and you should know how to calculate RF values, and that's RF equals distance moved by the spark divided by distance moved by the solvent. You may be asked to explain why a particular method is suitable for a given situation, so be ready to apply your knowledge. Next, you may be asked questions on dot and cross diagrams. Be able to draw and understand diagrams showing how atoms bond. Ionic bonding happens between a metal and a non-metal. Electrons are transferred and you should show full outer shells and ion charges. Covalent bonding happens between two non-metals. Here, electrons are shared and you only need to draw the outer shells. Here, you'll want to stick to key examples like sodium chloride, water, methane and oxygen. Diagrams should be neat and clear. Examiners really appreciate tidy work. Right, next we think you should revise electrolysis. You should understand how electrolysis is used to split ionic compounds using electricity. The positive electrode attracts negative ions and the negative electrode attracts positive ions. Be able to describe what is produced at each electrode. So for example, hydrogen and chlorine being formed from a salt solution. Focus on the basic ideas rather than complex equations. Following that, you may want to revise atom economy. You'll need to use and explain atom economy, which tells us how efficient a chemical reaction is. The formula is atom economy equals relative formula mass, or MR, desired product, divided by total relative formula mass, MR, of all products times 100. And usually you'll be given the relative formula masses, so make sure to plug numbers in carefully. Okay, next we think you should revise titrations. Know how titrations are used to find out how much acid is needed to neutralise an alkali. You add a few drops of indicator, such as phenolphthalein or methyl orange, to your alkali in a conical flask. Then slowly add an acid from a burette until the indicator changes colour. This colour change tells you when neutralisation has happened. So for accurate results, repeat the experiment and look for concordant titers, which means readings that are within 0.1 cm cubed of each other. We then have life cycle assessments or LCAs. Here you need to understand the stages involved in assessing a product's impact on the environment throughout its life. There are four stages and that is raw material extraction, manufacturing use and disposal. Think about things like energy use, pollution, water use and waste at each stage. You may be asked to compare two products like plastic and paper bags and explain which one is more environmentally friendly overall. No maths is required here, just clear comparisons and simple explanations. Now, finally, here we have potable water. Potable water means water that's safe to drink. It doesn't have to be chemically pure. In the UK, groundwater is made potable through sedimentation, filtration and chlorination. If we're getting water from seawater, distillation is used, but this process requires a lot of energy. Now those are our separate foundation predictions. Our last set of predictions for this video on Edexcel Chemistry Paper 1 are our combined foundation predictions. So first and foremost, we think that you should revise acids and alkalis. You need to understand what acids and alkalis are, how they react and how to measure their strength using the pH scale. Acids like hydrochloric acid have a pH less than 7. Alkalis like sodium hydroxide have a pH greater than 7. A neutral substance has a pH of exactly 7. To measure pH, you can use universal indicator or litmus paper. You should also know the word equation for neutralisation. Acid plus alkali, then we have salt and water. This reaction happens when an acid and an alkali react to form a neutral solution. Next, look into separate mixtures. You'll need to describe simple ways to separate substances in mixtures. Filtration is used to remove insoluble solids, for example, separating sand from water. Simple distillation is used to separate a liquid from a solution, such as getting pure water from salty water. Focus on when and why you'd use each method. 
We then also have dot and cross diagrams. Be ready to draw simple dot and cross diagrams to show bonding. In ionic bonding, which happens between a metal and a non-metal, electrons are transferred. You should show full outer shells and charges on the ions here. Now in covalent bonding, which happens between two non-metals, electrons are shared and here you'd only draw the outer shells. Here it's worth having a practice with examples like sodium chloride, water, methane and oxygen. You don't need to tackle complex molecules, so just focus on getting the basics right and drawing clearly. Okay, next up we have electrolysis. Electrolysis is a process that splits ionic substances using electricity. It only works when the substance is molten or dissolved in water because the ions need to move freely. The positive electrode attracts negative ions and the negative electrode attracts positive ions. You should aim to know your specifications set examples such as copper sulfate and sodium chloride solution. We then suggest you revise life cycle assessments or LCAs. You should be able to describe the four main stages of a product's life cycle and how each stage affects the environment. These stages are getting raw materials, making the product, using the product and disposing of the product. At each stage think about energy use, pollution, water use and waste. You might be asked to compare two products too, like a paper bag versus a plastic one. There's no perfect answer, but be ready to explain your reasoning clearly and simply. Now, our final prediction for combined foundation is potable water. Potable water is water that's safe to drink, but that doesn't mean it's chemically pure. It still contains small amounts of dissolved substances. In the UK, groundwater is made potable through sedimentation, filtration and chlorination. Seawater can also be turned into drinking water using distillation, but the process is expensive and uses a lot more energy. Be ready to describe how potable water is made and compare different methods based on cost and practicality. Okay, everyone, those are our predictions for Edexcel GCSE Chemistry Paper 1. We really hope they help you. Do obviously keep in mind that these are just predictions. We make them to guide your revision. They shouldn't act as your only source of revision. We really hope they help though. Best of luck in your 2025 exams.